for me, any form of social injustice is just wrong. Society should be a place where everybody is equal before the law, irrespective of your positioning, your status, your family, or your background. When a person comes out of the closet, their first need for reassurance usually comes from within their family. Unfortunately, that acceptance is often in short supply, leading to prejudice, discrimination, and sometimes violence. Now, acceptance for an LGBT person can significantly reduce their mental and sexual stress. On the other hand, having to deal with rejection can increase chances of things like drug abuse, depression, stigmatization, and even suicide. On today's episode of Untold Facts, we will be talking about the profound effect that family acceptance can have on an LGBT person. We're also going to talk about the risks of someone staying in the closet, especially as it affects their spouses, where their spouses are unaware. My name is Aritofo, and we are going to have an amazing episode. Society should be a place where everybody is equal before the law, irrespective of your positioning, your status, your family, or your background. My guest today is somebody that is definitely going to give us a very unique spin on today's topic. She's a senior campaigns manager for All Out, and her name is Pamela Atier. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank what you. Else? Oh no, I'm, I'm good, man. You need to explain to us what what all out is. I will tell you, but first, man, I need to eat. I'm so hungry. Is that what they do? You are coming to? <laughs> Let's be going. Okay, yes. awesome. So you guys run campaigns. Yes. Okay. What do these campaigns involve? So sometimes um, we've run campaigns uh, to raise money to help LGBT people in need. Mm -hmm. For instance, the last one, uh, the, one of the most recent ones we did was to fund Pride Uganda. Oh yes, I heard about that. I heard about that. But well, let's, let's take it home now. Obviously, in the course of your work, you will encounter you know, people who have just come out. And what, what are the ranges of experiences that you see or reactions that you see, especially from families? So I'll talk about this from a very personal point, or a very personal perspective. perspective. Okay. Um, when I came out, uh, like my family wasn't really, they were more shocked mm. and um, somewhat angry to, to an extent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to, to an extent, I did fall into that whole, okay, this is, this is like the next thing, like, yeah. okay, the next box to check. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I did get married and, and um, but of course the marriage didn't last very long mm. because I eventually came out of the closet. And when I did that, you know, there was all sorts of mm -hmm. opposition. I mm. mean, opposition from family, from friends, mm -hmm. from everywhere. And, you know, my, my, my mom even thought that I was like, you know, I was possessed. possessed and, like you know, she would, it. yeah, she would bring like priests to the house and, oh. and talk and try to cast out the demon or whatever. You, you've told me this story. Um, more than once and every time we talk about it I can't help wondering at that point in time of you coming out what did you need the most? I needed support mm. that was it mm -hmm. I needed I, I mean I expected that the reaction would be the way it was but I, I sort of believed or hoped in my mind that it would be that I, I would eventually receive Watching some kind of support mm. you know i just needed to be to be told okay nothing is wrong with with you you're you're still our daughter we we love you and but i never got any of those mm. messages yeah. um um well i never got them from my from my mom but my mm. dad was a bit more subtle you know he still expressed love and all that mm. yeah and how, how did that make you feel, realizing that this was something I was looking for that I couldn't get? Well, obviously, I mean, it, it, made, it made me feel hurt, you know. I mean, it, it just imagine being rejected yeah. by your own family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and for me, being rejected by my mom was even more traumatic because mm -hmm. that's someone that I really, really love. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping that, you know, the fact that she loved me would actually take precedence yes, over anything over else, anything else mm. but it didn't happen yeah okay so while you're eating how much of this i mean parents especially in the african context have this belief that my child should grow up like you said you know finish school come back home get married and so on how much of that reaction was due do you think was due to the fact that these hopes and dreams i've had for my child 
will no longer happen. The African parents have a very clear path. They are not, well, I mean, they're getting better at letting mm -hmm. their children be whoever they want to be. But to what extent do you think that's affected their reaction to you? I think it played a, I think it played a very big role okay. because I always like to say that, um, you know, I, I, like, I give my, my mom space because I feel like she has to mourn the child, that, the that, dream she yes, lost. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. she has to like deal with it and accept it within her, her own self. Mm -hmm. And also for the fact that it, it sometimes, or maybe it does or doesn't, uh, contradict her own beliefs. And so I've been very patient with, with her, with them as a family. Um, and um, I, I, I feel like that actually, you know, is, is an issue because not only do we have to deal with, with random strangers, but, mm -hmm. we, but our families have to deal with like members of this, of, of, I mean, other members of the family, like aunts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uncles mm -hmm. and nephews mm -hmm. and nieces and cousins and all that. Mm -hmm. So there's pressure too from, from her mm -hmm. to keep up that, okay, that appearance of, I'm not accepting this, or I'm not doing that, mm -hmm. because people ask her, well, you know, ah, your, your child is gay, hmm, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's also pressure from her to keep up appearances like that. So I feel like the African si system, I don't want to say system, but uh, maybe for lack of a better word, the African system of the mm -hmm. family yeah. is, is uh, actually has a huge influence. That's a very much emotionally mature perspective. And I would say, obviously, in the course of your work, your work has influenced you in the, in the sense that you're so much more objective about this. Do you feel then that, even coming from the perspective of your own feelings of isolation and lack of support, you feel that you still owe your parents that understanding? Do you feel like there's something to forgive in the sense that you did not give the, get the acceptance that you needed? Well, uh, for me, it's been it's it's been a case of trying not to gloss over stuff. Like mm. for me, mm. I feel like things have happened. Yeah. Um, things have been said. Hurtful mm. things have been said, mm -hmm. and um, I would want a situation where both sides can come together and say, "Listen, this is this is what happened." Like acknowledge mm. that there was some hurt. Mm. Um, you know, being done, and actually, like you know, because one of the key things to getting over stuff or getting over hurts is acknowledgement. You know, just being able to say, okay, yes, I hurt you, or yes, I was wrong, or you were wrong, or you know, being able to have that conversation mm -hmm. and come to that agreement and say, okay, this is this happened, it was wrong, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. can we start over? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you don't get that? And if I, if I don't get that, I mean, we're, we're going to have to find a way to balance it. Because I think that at this point, um, my family is, is more, they, they, I think at this point, they just want a relationship with me. Um, okay. No matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, and it's so funny you're asking me this question because we're like in the middle of it, like it, like at the beginning of of that sort of reconciliation yeah. um, part of 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 all this, and so I'm I'm really hopeful. I'm looking forward so to uh, so <laughs> so yeah. I'm 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 looking forward to um to what what's what's coming and you know having the opportunity to sit down and mm -hmm. have a conversation mm -hmm. and really talk things out. Yeah, I I hear you on finding that acceptance within yourself and. I know that even though you make it sound easy, that it wasn't that easy. I know it took a long time. What for you would be your best case scenario going forward? So um, I've sort of come to a place where I've accepted that you know I might ne I might never get acceptance from my from my family, mm. and it's it's okay. Mm. Um, but the best case scenario, if if you as you asked me right now, that mm. I hope for mm. is. As I said, having both parties come together to just have, have a conversation, conversation. Mm -hmm. and just to acknowledge that, okay, hurt was caused, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. things were said that were inappropriate yeah. or probably not meant, mm -hmm. and just have 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so I'm sorry. Come, healing. Start over. Hmm. That would be my best case scenario. Um, I know you were married and you've, you've talked about, for you it was a journey of where you accepted who you were in your marriage. But there are also many people who are fully aware of their sexuality and get married to members of the opposite sex knowing that they are gay but not sharing that with their partners. How much of that do you think is due to this fear of society or do you think it's just plain dishonesty? Hmm. Heavy, it's a heavy question. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's heavy because there isn't like, you know, one size fits all. Mm. I mean, different people look for different things. People get married for different reasons. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I really can't say that it's this and not that. Mm -hmm. But I'd, I'd say that it's a, it could be a combination of both. Yeah. There are people who, for fear of discrimination and rejection and whatever else mm -hmm. they, they think will happen, yeah. um, go ahead and get married to, you know to members of the opposite sex even mm -hmm. though they're they are with different sexual orientation mm -hmm. and then they somehow hope that maybe w being married would help them to maybe change mm. their orientation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is what happened to me because i also i was i also thought that you know if i mean so b b before i got married i i was i was you know i i was um how do I put this now? Um, I was in relationships with females, but I never saw myself as lesbian. Mm. You know, so that's the coming out to self part. Mm -hmm. So, the, but there are also people who 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 have already gotten past that that stage, yeah. but still go ahead and get yes. married. And so I feel like it's re rejection, discrimination, blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. It's all part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and this, at the same time, there are people who 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 don't know, who honestly don't know that this and, is. Who yeah, and haven't are, really thought game. about yeah. any, haven't really thought about it in that mm -hmm. way, um, and honestly believe in their minds that if I do this long enough, I yeah. will fi it will fix me. It will fi exactly. Mm -hmm. But often the reverse is the case because you hear stories of like domestic violence and so on, where it almost seems like the person is resentful of their partner for allowing them stay for not what do you think causes that conflict well i really um i can only speak from personal experience mm. um so when i was married it was getting to a point where i was beginning to resent my ex-husband okay and and i didn't want to hit him because mm. he was a great guy mm. you know there wasn't i have i have no complaints about him mm. whatsoever mm. um so I, I knew that if I let it get to that point where I hated him, it would escalate into yeah. something else. Yeah. So, but I was also blaming him for even accepting to marry me, you know, even it's if, so yeah, even if it wasn't really his fault, but yeah. somehow I was like, I don't know, maybe I was looking for someone to blame. Mm. I don't know what was happening, but I was blaming him to, mm -hmm. to, a, to a certain degree. So mm -hmm. there, there are people, yeah, who, who, who face the same thing. And I would imagine have the same yeah, struggles. That conflict, yeah. yeah, Because it does seem like a very conflicted state of affairs that, yeah. you know, this is not who I am, but I'm with you. And like, can't you see that? Yeah. You, don't don't you feel like there's something wrong? Yeah, it is, you know? it's almost like a projection. Like, mm. because you're in conflict with, with, with yourself, you yeah. project that conflict onto, onto someone else. else. Yes. And so it's, you see, that's why you have all the, you know, person does something really small mm. and it becomes a, a big, big deal, issue. Mm. you know, whereas it's really not that serious, mm -hmm. you know. So, so it's, I, I feel like what we, we, we express whatever is inside. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not me saying that one person's choice is right or the other wrong, but there are so many innocent lives that get pulled apart. Um, you have an unsuspecting spouse who perhaps finds out. You, you are unable to access proper reproductive health care because you, you are afraid to talk. And so there are health risks, there are psychological risks, you have children. Mm -hmm. And what often happens is after some years in, the, in these marriages, the person in question wakes up and decides, I can't do this anymore. Um, best case scenario, you walk out. Mm -hmm. And when you say that the best case scenario is you leaving, then you can think of all the worst case scenarios, you know, 
So even with that, I can imagine then that you feel a bit of conflict where on some level you want to say, oh boy, you self, you know, you're saying you're supposed <laughs> to do this thing. You know, yeah. how do you keep that balance or that objectivity or that neutrality? Personally, uh, it didn't. It didn't really. It didn't really come easy. One of my. The, what the main reason that I actually worked out is because, for me, I needed to be free. Mm. So it was. It was about me first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then also, it was about my ex-husband. So mm -hmm. this is a guy. Yeah, this is a guy. Very nice guy, and he's. He has this expectation on his head mm. and here I am with my own <laughs> thing going on mm -hmm. so it's like okay well so how do we merge the two yeah. and it really wasn't a way to merge the two Obviously, um yeah. so I, I said well you know things will happen but I felt like in the in the in in the no, no matter how bad things got I was honest with him, him. Mm -hmm. and he and you know and he he deserved someone that would actually give him that expectation yeah. that he had mm -hmm. and and then of course I too deserve to be happy of course yeah of course uh, going forward again we, we live in a culture where we're expected to conform to certain black and white lines and you made a comment earlier about how perhaps part of your mom's conflict was the conflict with her religious beliefs and values to what extent do you think religion plays a part in encouraging parents to accept or refuse to accept that, okay, this child is different and I have to accept that? So, I mean, I don't, I don't need to tell you, if you go to Nigerian churches, um, especially during close to election time, mm -hmm. or as soon as there's anything LGBT related um, that people are talking about, the first thing you hear is, uh, is you know, how abomination and how yes. people are possessed and mm -hmm. how they are going to hell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you have all these narratives about LGBT people that are not true mm -hmm. and that are coming from a place of prejudice. Mm. So now you have people who go to church every Sunday and they listen to all of that um, any time they come up. So it's coming from a place of prejudice. Mm -hmm. So you have all these people going yeah. every Sunday mm -hmm. and hearing these messages. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, if my 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 pastor exactly is going against mm -hmm. my pastor's mm -hmm. um, what I've been advice told this, this. and what I've been told. So now you have a conflict where you have your your identity, which is your your religion, which is part of your identity, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. conflicting with, with with reality. Yeah. And so, so it. yeah, and so it's like, okay, well, what, what do I do? On one hand, if, if I don't follow my, my pastors or whatever, what does that say about my What does that say about do, your yeah. faith? You, you, you begin to feel as if you're betraying that part mm -hmm, of you, like mm -hmm. you're not being yourself yeah. or whatever. So, so there is that conflict. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, interestingly, um, I have a family friend who is, who is a Catholic priest. And he is, he has been like one of the, my biggest support systems ever. Wow. Yeah, he mm -hmm. has, he has always reinforced messages of love, messages of acceptance, acceptance. and it has never been an issue for mm -hmm. him. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, so what is, which, which, which part of the Bible or which, which religion Bible is he reading, is he that, reading the that the others aren't? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so now it's a, it's a question of, okay, so, so is, it, is, is there another sort of agenda mm -hmm. on this side? No, but we, you we, know what we, I mean? We, but we do know that religion is very subjective. Yes. And, um, you know, that's, it's different things. The same thing is different things to different people. Mm -hmm. You know, with all these factors, culture, family expectations, religion, you have a family come to you and they're troubled, they're distraught. My child has just come out to say that they are gay. What do we do? How should we feel? Where do we go from here? What do you say? Accept your kid. It's hard. You just have to. You have to, you have to find a way to accept them because the world is already like, it's already cruel to LGBT mm -hmm. people outside. Yeah. They don't need an additional layer mm -hmm. from people that they expect to love them the most. Yes. I mean, Parenting is about unconditional love. Mm -hmm. It's not about I will love you until you do, or I will, I will love you as long as you follow A, B, C, D, E. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you go 
F Y Z or whatever. Then you're on your own. Then you're on your own. Mm -hmm. That is not parenting. Parenting yeah. means unconditional love. I love you no matter that's what. It. I'm on your side, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I, I would say. Find a way to support your child. Look for look for um, support groups. Mm -hmm. If you have to go online to read about other people because there are other parents oh, you're, yes. you're not yes, the only you're not one alone yes there are other parents who have lgbt children mm -hmm. who have had to deal with the same issue of, mm -hmm. of acceptance yeah. and have found a way to make, to it, make work. it work yeah. so you can also do the same mm -hmm. you can also find a way to make it work mm -hmm. um there's many resources on online you can reach out and just just for the, for the for the love of everything good love your child Thank you so much. I, you know, I have a lot of respect for the bravery and the vulnerability with which you speak of your experience. It's one thing to go through something. It's another thing to share, yeah. you know, all the things you've gone through. And every time you do it, I'm just, again, awed by the strength it takes you to mm. put yourself out there. It, yeah. You know it's incredible. Yeah. You, know, you know you're my best man. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> but it, this is a picture that we don't often see, the effect of acceptance or its lack on a child who's, and I say a child deliberately, a child whose only need is to hear that validation from a parent. You are still my child, I still love you. As a parent, you might have to deal with the fact that I had all these dreams for this child and they're no longer going to happen. It doesn't mean that your child is any less your child than before. It doesn't mean that they love you any less. Now, guys, I would really like your perspective on this conversation. It's one that I know touches across a lot of people. So please check out our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, at Tears Nigeria. Share your contributions using the hashtag UntoldFacts2. We want to hear from you. Are you a parent struggling? Are you a child who's dealing with a lack of acceptance? Are you somebody that feels, you know what, I've walked down this road. I can be there for you. My name is Aritoko. Thank you so much for watching.